Hi, I hope everyone has had a wonderful week. Um, our lesson today is entitled Jesus, the Bread of Life, and it comes from John, the sixth chapter, the 25th through the 40th verse. And um, let's start with a moment of prayer. Father, we come to you today. Thank you for life, for health, for strength. We thank you now for this awesome lesson that we get the opportunity to learn. Right now, God, we ask that you give us a listening ear so that we can take in your word and do better as disciples. It is in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, with our lesson title being called Jesus the Bread of Life, when we hear that word bread, what do you think of? For me, I like bread because... It's, it's something that fills you up. It gives you a nice warm feeling and it prepares us. It's something that makes us feel loved when we someone prepares bread for us. So what does it mean for Jesus to be called the bread of life? Well, we'll find out in our lesson today. So let's read on. So let's start off by reading um, verses 25 through 33 in our lesson today. And when they had found him on the other side of the sea, they said unto him, Rabbi, when comest thou hither? Jesus answered them and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Ye seek me not, because you saw the miracles, but because ye did eat of the loaves and were filled. Labor not for the meat which perished, but for the meat which endureth unto everlasting life which the Son of Man shall give unto you, for him have God the Father sealed. Then said they unto him, What shall we do, that we might work the works of God? Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that ye believe on him whom he hath sent. They said therefore unto him, What sign showeth thou then, that he may see, and believe thee? What dost thou work? Our fathers did eat manna in the desert, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. So, we see Jesus having a back and forth conversation with they. And the they are the people who were following him at the time of our lesson last week when we talked about Jesus walking on water. There was a crowd that had, he had been, he had um, been teaching and he fed the, the multitude with the two fish and five loaves of bread. So these are those same people. They follow Jesus to where he is. And they they ask some questions. They start wanting to know stuff about Jesus. And they ask him, Rabbi, where did you come from? Because they had seen the boat. The disciples got in the boat. But Jesus didn't get in the boat. So they, they, were, they were curious as to know, well, how did you get here, Jesus? How did, Rabbi, how did you get over here? So Jesus responds to their question by saying, you were looking for me because I gave you something to eat. Not the miracle of uh, giving thanks and breaking the bread and the fish and, and multiplying out not the fact that you saw the disciples get in the boat and i wasn't in it but now i'm over here you've seen these miracles but that wasn't what you really that's not what you're really looking for me for you're looking because you like that food that i gave you and <laughs> so you're not you can you're concerned with perishable stuff is what he says and not the eternal life that the son of man can give you so that's that first interaction that he has with the they, the crowd. So then the crowd goes on to ask another question. How do we perform God's work is what they essentially ask. So Jesus is, he gives them a very simple answer. Believe in him who was sent. God isn't interested 
in what you do. He's interested in what you believe. Because really your belief, what you believe, your actions should line up to what you believe. So that's what Jesus answered, just very simply. Believe, believe in him. So then the crowd, they, they still want to know more. So they ask him um, something that's very interesting, a statement and questions in the next interaction that Jesus has with them. They say, what signs can you show us? What work will you do? Then they quote from the law stating, he gave the bread from heaven to eat. So basically they're implying that Moses gave our four parents manna bread from heaven while in the desert. So Jesus has to correct some bad theology right there because the manna, the bread, it didn't come from Moses. It came from God. It came from heaven. And so he lets them know that came from the Father. It did not come from Moses. And then he explains that the bread of, from heaven gives life unto the world. So let's keep reading on and see what happens next in the text. So let's read 34 through 40. Then they said unto him, Lord evermore, give us this bread. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. But I say unto you that ye have also seen me and believe not. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that commit, cometh to me I will in no way wise cast out. For I came down from heaven not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the Father's will which hath sent me, that all of you which he hath given me, I should not I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that every one which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have an everlasting life, and will raise him up at the last day. So now the crowd they ask for something they want they want that bread. The bread that Jesus has just instructed them on. They want it and they want it ever more. So after Jesus' discussion with them, that's the bread that they want. So Jesus goes on and boldly declares to them, I am the bread of life. They have an inclination, a, a, a kind of knowing that Jesus is declaring himself the Messiah at that time. So now he boldly tells them, I am the bread of life. And he goes on and even, even, even more detail. Those who come to, to him will never hunger or thirst. He's not talking about physical hunger and physical thirst. He's talking about their spiritual needs will be met forever by his presence on earth. He then further explains that you know you saw me, but you didn't believe. A lot of people see things, but they don't believe nothing. You know, they had seen the miracle of the, the feeding of people. They had seen the miracle of how did Jesus get across the lake when he didn't enter the boat with the disciples. So they saw him, but they didn't believe in him as the Messiah yet. And he goes on to tell them, I will never reject what the Father has sent to me. I will lose nothing. And I have come to do my Father's will. It's not my will. It's my Father's will. He, he lets them know that. And His will is that everyone will be raised up that comes to Him. Who believeth in Him on the last day. So that's some good news that Jesus speaks during those last um last verses of our lesson and it's also a way that we can help with discipleship of others is to explain to them that that's the reason that's the reason for salvation so we can have eternal life and that's actually a good passage when you're talking with people about salvation which leads me to my lesson takeaways for this lesson um the first being since discipleship is our topic for this this um quarter discipleship it involves following christ for an internal relationship, not for just temporary earthly gains. 
And that is what Jesus is trying to get them to see. That this, his coming to earth, him being the bread of life, it is an eternal thing. It's not just something that's temporary. Many people associate being called Christian or being in Christian circles, being in a church. They do it. They're not doing it because of what they believe. They're not trying to have a relationship with Christ. What they're trying to do is have social connections, financial connections, political connections. And they're using the church and Christ in a way that is not what Jesus came for. And they're not doing it as salvation to others. So when we are a disciple of Christ and truly a believer and follower of Christ, our primary goal is to have an eternal relationship with him by believing in him. So the next lesson takeaway is we must be willing to have conversations with people. We see in this lesson that Jesus is having a very detailed conversation with the crowd. <laughs> he could have easily been like, you know what? I, I got miracles to do. I ain't got time to be talking to these people. But no, he talks to them. And he has a lot of back and forth. And he explains and corrects a lot of bad thinking. So he's fully engaged. And he hears what they're saying. And he answers them. In your discipleship journey, are you listening to others? Are you explaining to them what who the bread of life is so that they will know after a conversation with you about eternal life about being saved that is our work as disciples to always listen to others and to try and direct them in the correct path so that is our lesson for this week about jesus being the bread of life if you have any questions please let me know our um, lesson for next week will be Jesus heart saying and it we will continue on in um, John chapter 6 and it'll be verses 53 54 then verses 60 through 71 so I hope everyone has an awesome awesome week and I look forward to talking to you next week